Hi everyone, so today I want to talk about events and how to handle them procedurally in SageBox. And here is a program that's in the examples uh, for SageBox for the QuickSave++ and the regular SageBox. Uh, this is uh, the QuickSave++ variety of it where we do the quick CPP and what it does is it creates the, the window for you where with the SageBox you create it yourself. So just, just a difference at the beginning and everything else is pretty much the same. And so let me run this program. And what you can see is is that when I move the mouse and I write my name, my handwriting is not great, but when I write my name, that every time I move the mouse or press the mouse, that's an event. Or when I right-click the mouse and it erases the screen, that that's also an, an event. And so everything that we do these days in programs is basically based on events. And so uh, menu items like this and highlighting things, typing, it, it's all event-based. So let me get rid of the comments in this program. Here's a source for the program I just ran. Let me get rid of the comments real quickly. And so now that all the comments are gone, you can see this is actually a very short program. There's really not a lot to it. Uh, there's actually a lot of white space. And um, if I zoom in on it a little bit, you can see that the entire program is really right here. And the event loop, where we look at the events, is right here. Now, let me show you another program. So very quickly, what I want to show is I want to show this program. This is very different. You can see there is no event loop. And all it does is it sets a, a window handler and it waits for a close. Now, this is not what I'm showing today. This is basically how we traditionally look at events. And so SageBox handles all of that as well in terms of event driven, but that's not what I want to show today. And I'm just showing this as kind of a history of if you've ever worked with something like Qt or uh, WX widgets or whatever, uh, a lot of those, or just pure Windows programs programming, there's always kind of some form of callback for an event. So if I run this program, for example, I'm going to run it in debug mode. I think I have to recompile it. So if I run it in debug mode, that you can see I'm not really getting events. And as soon as I move the mouse in there, I get a mouse event, and it stops at my breakpoint. And similarly, if I uh, do this, let me run this again. Similarly, if I click on it, it's going to give me a mouse event. And then if I just run the program straight, it prints a bunch of stuff out when I click on it. It um, puts the click location uh, depending on what I want to do. And so I have two callbacks here that I've established with my window handler. And I'm going to do this in another video. And I'm just showing that this is really the traditional way that we tend to look at events. But we can do it procedurally. And this is what this is video is about. So if I go to the basic examples directory in the QuickC++, and the same ones exist in SageBox, I'm using QuickC++ here to show some of the QuickC++ stuff, but it all applies to SageBox in general. And so what I can do is I can go into Mouse and Events, and let me load that project. And let me get rid of the comments real quick so we can just see the source code. So you can see the shortcode is, is very small in this program. We don't really have to do a lot to do what the program does. And let's run the program. And so all this program does is it prints out some things. It prints something out to the debug window. I'll show more about that in a minute. And then when I click, it just prints a rectangle wherever I'm at. And so what I want to show is I want to show how this program works and, and how we do it procedurally. As you can see, there's no callbacks at all. It all occurs in this event loop. And that's how we get events and deal with events inside of Windows. And, uh, you know, if you're doing a console mode program, you can bring up something called the dev window. And you've got the debug window where you can have all this nice power without really going into a Windows program per se. It runs as a console mode program that just happens to have a window. But if you take away the window, of course, there's no reason for events if you don't have a window in this particular program. But I'll, I'll show a use in a minute where we might use a console mode program where we're not really intending to do a Windows program, but we can use the Windows functions to help us deal with our program. You know, whether we're writing a library or just something that's meant to do plain text output and that sort of thing. So let's start with a clean slate and get rid of everything except for the uh, initialization so that we have our window. And so the first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and just make sure our window is working properly. And I'm just going to do an exit button and compile. 
And so when I run it, you can see that we just really much have, pretty much have this blank slate where I can press the button to close it or I can close the window and then we're back to our console mode window. And again, if you want to make this a pure Windows program without the console mode window, you can just go ahead and select Windows and then it just won't have the console mode window. And let's put this in debug. Uh, really not that much of a difference between a Windows program and a console mode program it really comes down to it. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to start seeing what events are, are, are occurring and or when they're occurring. And so what I can do is I can say when.getEvent. And what that will do is I do while when.getEvent and it won't return unless the window closes. Uh, whether you close it yourself or, or Windows is shutting down, it just it just won't return. You can actually turn that off, and you can trap any message. Just because we're getting messages here, we can still get all the Windows messages in the same format I showed before, and uh, I'll show that in another video. But right now, what we can do is if I didn't want the window to close, I didn't want the user to do that, I could just shut it off, and then I could check it manually. But as it is, the default behavior is, is that when the window closes, uh, get event will return and will fall through to the exit button. And so what I want to do is I want to show essentially how the events are working here. So I'm going to set up a counter. And compile again. And so when I run it, you can see, wait, let me, let me, uh, you can see that as I move the mouse, uh, it shows me what the events account is. This, this shows me every time I'm getting an event. And so when I'm out of the window, I'm not getting an event because this only gives me the events for the window. And so right now we don't have a lot going on in the window. So all we can really do is get mouse events, but also mouse press events, uh, which I'll show in a minute. And well, you can see that like if I just press the mouse, it um, you know it does one when I press it, one when I release it. I'll show more about that in a minute. Or when I size the window, it's giving me messages that the window is resizing. So you can deal with that in your code if you want to. So now let's just react to only mouse movements. So what I can do is is I can do I can do event dot uh, mouse moved and and that will t this is a good way to get a list of all the events that you can do in the window and the same thing in the controls. But once you get used to it, it's just easy enough to just do uh, the shorthand version, which is win dot mouse moved. And then what I can do is I can say if the mouse is moved. So let me get the mouse position. So we can get the mouse position here. And then you can do the same thing as before. Compile that. And so now it's only going to react when I move the mouse. And so now when I size the window, for example, it won't, it won't show the, uh, the movements because I'm only looking for the mouse movements. And so similarly, I can also look for the mouse uh, click. I can just copy this and just say if mouse clicks. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the con IO functions that provide a lot of the uh, standard IO functions that uh, C++ doesn't really have embedded in it. And so what I can do is I can just go and print this out in yellow. And then I can say uh, mouse click. Do the same thing. And so when I click on it, see, you can see in yellow, it tells me where I've clicked. So I'm differentiating between events. And so the whole idea behind the get event loop is, is that what we can do is we can say, okay, we know events are happening. And the program, as you can see before, when no events are happening, the program is just uh, completely frozen in time. There's no CPU activity going or anything. It just wakes up in this, in this loop when an event happens, which doesn't really happen that often. And so it doesn't really affect CPU processing time or anything. And so what we can do instead of having a callback for every single event that we want, and we may want to do that. We may want to expand on this later. There, there are certain times where you definitely do want to get the events, but for most things, we can just do it right here. And we can mix them. Like I said, you don't have to choose one or the other. You can have all event driven, you can have all procedurally event driven like this, or you can have, have a mixture. So the idea is, is that in the get event loop, we know events are happening. And so what we do is we just look for the events we're interested in. And this means that if we have controls and that sort of thing, we can uh, look at those controls. So let's do some controls right now. Let me go ahead and, and get a button. Oh, let me show one more thing first. Is that I see how I look for the, the mouse position here. I don't really have to do that. What I can do is I can just set up a point. It's a standard Windows type. And then what I can do is I can just put it in here. And that way I don't have to... Um, I can just sort all these down to... Uh, basically...
Okay, so now you can see that what I have here is I just have the point, and then I'm just printing the point. And so the nice thing is when you do the mouse move, mouse click, all, all of the event functions in Sage Wax work like this. It only fills in that value when it's moved and or when it comes back true. So it's only getting filled when it's clicked or moved. So you can refer to it later and not worry about the event loop changing it unless it actually needs to be changed. So let's go ahead and set up a couple controls. So now we have a button. Let's go ahead and add an event, uh, or rather an event, you know, a check basically. And before, like I said, you can do event dot to get a list of events. And then so I can do pressed dot pressed. Uh, but like I said, the shorthand version of it is just pressed. And if you put the mouse button, the mouse over it, it'll tell you what it does. And so I can say, hey, if the button was pressed, I'm going to do conio again, put it in maybe uh, purple this time. Let's compile that. And now when I press this button, I can just press it and it'll tell me that it was pressed. And this is, you know, a situation where, you know, if you have a smaller window, for example, and this is just a console mode program, you can use a button like this as a helper for your program to start something, stop something, print a status, whatever. I'll show more about that in just a second. So let's go ahead and add another button. And so we'll just have button one and button two, and then uh, one and we'll two, and then we'll add maybe 30 to this. And then, so it's just a matter of adding what you have to look at and you can do button groups and i'll show that in another video where you can just do one call to say hey was any button in this group pressed and it will return to you the number of the button was pressed or or uh, either a false or a zero or the button number that was pressed so you can just press one and it'll it'll tell you which index into into your group was pressed and so you can really shorten down this after you know you, you collect enough controls and so let me go ahead and do that and let me go ahead and do i did that in purple let me do this in green and so now i have two buttons and now i have button one and i have button two and so it's pretty much that simple now let me add one more thing let me add a slider and so what i have here is i have a slider that starts at uh, 10 and 80 uh, in the wide direction and it's 200 in width and then the um, label is my slider and then I put show value to show the value. With sliders sometimes you want to show them sometimes you don't and so this, this just says to show the value and so in the same way that I did it before I can say fc slider dot moved and I can give it a position to fill or I can get the I can, I can say get position to but I'll go ahead and just uh, you know get a position here and then what I can do is I can say if it's moved then uh, let's do the Kaneo thing again and we'll print this out in red and then we can say uh, slider position equals uh, in that red and then put the slider position and then we just do position and compile that so then as I move the slider you'll see that it's puts the slider position as I move it, uh, which is really quite nice. So let me show you one other thing. So this, like I said, this is a Windows program that just happens to have a console mode. But let's say you're in a console mode program, you're writing a library, you don't really want to do a Windows program, but you want to use this stuff to help. Instead of the new button and new slider, you can say dev button and dev slider. And what they do is they have a lot of defaults associated with them and it automatically places everything for you. And so uh, you don't have to do the show value because it defaults to that, which should be the default anyway. But um, And so now I have exactly the same program except for one thing. Now let me go ahead and hide the window. And why well, can't hide the window because I need the slider. Oh no, wait, I can hide the window. That's right, because I don't need the window anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide it. Uh, and it doesn't appear until you use it. So this just tells it to just never show it in the first place. So if I have a console mode program, what I can do is I can say, okay, I can use this as kind of a helper to print out information. And that way I can uh, write my console mode program and uh, have all these nice little things that I can do to uh, affect things. Or what you can do is you can bring these up as options or just as a window that people can use. You can make your own window. But the dev control window is nice because it has a lot of things you can add to it and it does it all automatically and it stays out of your program. And another thing that you can do too is, is that instead of the printf, let me just go ahead and do the debug printf. And this is, uh, goes through the process control window. 
And so now if you have a a program where you're you're doing something uh, like a console mode program what you can do is you can say okay this is completely outside of the console mode because now I have this um, this debug window which is completely detached and that's why it's so small I'll later add something to expand it but this is a process control window and so uh, this allows you to really develop in more of a console mode and have um, just a lot of tools available. Anyway, so that is the overall uh, kind of basics of using the events in a procedural way. And in an upcoming video, I'll show more about how we can get event driven and do more things that way. Anyway, thanks for listening and I'll see you around in other videos.